Alright, so according to our passage this morning, now when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then he said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excuse. 19. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I am going to test them. I ask you to have me excuse. 20. Still another, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in here the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded, and still there is room. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highway, Pastor Michael is still in highway, and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. Hello, shalom. For I say to you that none of you, none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. Praise the Lord for the reading. But they are invited because according to the Bible, those who are invited, those who are in high. You know, wonderful. It was our message yesterday in our senior. But I think uh, the whole congregation and those who are in Facebook has to hear it. Because this is a very wonderful message, which is one of my favorite topics here. <laughs> Why? Because I love the whole book. The whole book is my favorite. <laughs> why? Because Bible is my favorite book. That's why in every words and every sentences and passages and teachings in the Bible are my favorites. Okay? And this morning, let's talk about the parables. Okay? Parables is a very, very important device of Jesus Christ to preach and to speak and to teach people how to understand the nature of God. All right? Okay, so you will notice that even in the Old Testament, okay, even in the Old Testament, most of the prophets were using parables. Okay, they were using parables. Prophet Isaiah used parables. Okay, even Nathan, when he was talking with, with uh, King David, he used a parable. When he was he was confronting King David because of his sin against Bathsheba and Uriah. Do you remember that? And then even uh, 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 Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, they use parable. Because parable is the best way to attract the attention of the people. Okay? I remember when we were young, when we were still, you know, when we were child, child children, we want to hear stories from the oldies. We want to hear the stories. We want to hear the stories from from uh, television. Okay, I, I'm sure you are still. Uh, I don't know if you still remember the Once Upon a Time. Do you know that in TV? And then Fantastic. Okay, do you know that mga kwento ni Lola Basyang? All right. If you still remember those, it means you're already old. <laughs> All right? Okay, but there is no all this. As far as God is concerned, as far as eternity is concerned, because in eternity, okay, there is no young and there is no old because age is not known in eternity. All of us will be forever young. All right? Be forever young. And according to our passages, it is one of the most important things, my brother, when it comes to salvation. I want you to understand, Jesus Christ he speaks about salvation and he used parable in these teachings. 
He wants to catch the attention of many people. And accordingly, parable can be hidden or it can be revealed. Okay, the teaching of God can be hidden, okay, or it could be revealed to people. Maybe some of you may understand the teaching of the Bible, but some of you will not understand it. And that is the purpose of Jesus Christ. The intention of Jesus Christ for teaching parables is to find out among the listeners who are really interested to his teachings. And if you will notice that in the Bible, thousands of people are listening to the, to the teaching of Jesus. But in most of the time, only the 12 disciples are asking, Lord, teach us the meaning of the parable. But the people who are listening are also listening, but also talking with each other. Because they do not really pay attention to Jesus. So that when Jesus Christ closed and finished his teaching, only few could understand the teaching of Jesus. That's why Peter said, Lord, are there few who will make it in heaven? Are there few who will be saved in heaven? That's the question of the Bible. Are there few? Now, what is your answer? My answer is, I believe so. I believe so because only few could understand the teaching of Jesus and be sure that you belong to the few. Remember that, my brother and sisters. Salvation is an invitation by God. It is not voluntary. It is not your desire. Why? Because you do not know that there is such salvation. You don't even know that there is a requirements from God. Before you accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, all you need to do, all you, the things that you know, is that I, I have to go to the church and bring the candles and bring the flowers and say the prayer and prayer and prayer. That's what we knew when we accept, before we accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. And today, let us check ourselves. Are we interested in the teaching of Jesus Christ? Are you interested in the teaching of Jesus Christ? Or you, mar you are more interested on your uh, medicine maintenance? <laughs> Come on, tell me. Maybe you are more concerned on your maintenance. Oh, every day I need to have this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And yet you don't even bother to open your Bible for the past one year. And then you said you want to be saved and you want to go to heaven. No way. You need to prove yourself that you are really interested. Like what happened to the teaching of Jesus and to the story of the Bible. That the 12 disciples always ask Jesus, Lord Jesus, Master, teach us the meaning of the parable. You can see that from the Bible. You can see that from the Bible. Lord, teach us. How about the others? They don't care. After hearing the teaching of Jesus Christ, they will go. And then they will just go to Galilee or swim or go to the mall or go to, to, to the park. Okay, so today let us study this because we have wonderful message that we can learn in this parable and that is the title of our message. The parable of the great supper. Okay, and according to the first topic that we can learn here, look at verse 15. Now, when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, okay, remember that Jesus Christ has invited this tax collector. He invited many people, okay, and they were sitting in the table, and while they were sitting at the table, of course, there is food, okay? You know, yesterday I ate three times. <laughs> In the morning, during the senior, and then during the sending off of Mama Alice, until evening, nine o'clock, we're still eating. Okay, and that is a blessing. Praise, praise the Lord. Okay, and then according to to somebody, okay, somebody told Jesus that blessed is the man who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Okay, what is that kingdom of God? Because there is a belief, okay, remember that when Moses was at Mount Sinai, 
Okay? God told Moses, bring the 70 elders with you on the top of Mount Sinai and we will eat together. Okay? Okay, if you still remember that. So Moses and the 70 elders of the Israelites went up to the top of the Mount Sinai and they ate together in the presence of God. And then according to the many prophets of Israel, this thing will happen again when all people will go to heaven. We will eat in the presence of the Lord. And according to our parable, there is someone that says, Jesus, Master, Lord Jesus, blessed is the one who shall eat bread in the kingdom of heaven or in the kingdom of God. And be sure that that is your goal in your life, to eat in the presence of God there on the day of judgment. We will celebrate, my brother and sisters. And that is the reason why I am a Christian. This is the reason why I don't stop serving the Lord. Because I want to sit down in the presence of the Lord. In the presence of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And in the presence of the holy people of God. Eating in the presence of Jesus Christ. And be sure that that is also your goal. We will see our parents there. We will see our relatives who accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. We will see them face to face. And be sure, my brother and sisters, that should be your goal. It must be our goal, the Facebook people. Because if that is not your goal, okay, you have wasted your life. You have wasted your time that you keep on attending in the church, giving your tithes, and then you have other priorities in life. Our priority should be the Lord Jesus Christ sitting right there in the presence of the Lord, in the kingdom of heaven, and with all the redeems of God. And then look at verse 16, according to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, okay, the reply of Jesus Christ is, he made a parable. That is the reply of Jesus to that to that guy that says, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And then Jesus Christ made a parable. Okay, he spoke of parables and he said, A certain man gave a supper and invited many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. Okay, so all things are ready in heaven, my brother and sisters. All things are ready in heaven. That's why Jesus Christ is stepped down on earth. He began to invite the original people of God, the Jewish people. That was the first invitation that Jesus did. He sent, number one, himself to earth. He was born in, in Bethlehem. He grew up in Nazareth. And when he reached the age of 30, he began to invite people. And there were 12 people who responded to the teachings of Jesus Christ. That's the first thing that we can learn here. God sends invitation. And my brothers and sisters, salvation is invitation. Okay, it is invitation. You have been invited by God. Ah, pastor, God did not speak to me. Let me tell you this. God sent his disciple to you. He sent his disciple to you. He sent the pastor. He sent the brother. Maybe your wife, your husband, your children, your kids, your father, your mother. And that is an invitation from God. That's the way of God. He will not come to you. The angel will not come to your house and tell you, Okay, I am inviting you. That is not the way of the Lord. The invitation of the Lord is, He sent someone. He shared the gospel to you. That is the invitation. And that is the Lord's way when He invited people in Galilee, Judea, Samaria, Jericho, and in everywhere in Israel. Okay, and as I have said, 12 people had responded to this. Okay? And then in verse 17, And sent his servant at supper time to say those who were invited, Come, or already, it is now ready. Look at verse 18. But 
they all with one accord began to make excuses. And that is the problem with some people. They have a lot of excuses. And today, what is your excuse for not committing your life to Jesus? What is your excuse, my brother and sisters? Maybe you have excuses like, Pastor, I still need to fix my bank account. Then I will commit myself to God. Pastor, I am waiting for me to be hospitalized. Then I will commit myself to Jesus. Pastor, I need to be in the ICU. And then I will commit my life to Jesus. Don't wait for that because whether you like it or not, you will die. And be sure that before you die, you have been accepted the invitation from the Lord Jesus Christ. It is not voluntary, my brother. Salvation is not your own effort. It is not your own desire to be saved. It is an invitation. And that is the parable of Jesus Christ. To be saved, number one, you must be invited by Jesus. And if you will not be invited by Jesus Christ, you will not be able to save yourself. You cannot save yourself, my brother and sisters. And praise the Lord, because someone came to me and invited me to come to the church. Say praise God that someone came to you, visited you, shared the gospel to you, and that is the meaning of invitation. Maybe you did not hear the voice of the angels. You did not hear the voice of Jesus Christ. But there is a disciple of Jesus Christ that has been sent by Jesus Christ in your home, in your job, in your community. That is an invitation. And if Jesus will not send invitation to you, you will never understand that there is such gospel of the kingdom of God. Yes? Amen. Amen. But don't make excuses, my brother and sister. Because if you refuse to the invitation of Jesus Christ, Jesus will look for others. And this is the sample of the parables. So that, what is the number one example, uh, the excuse here? I have brought a piece of ground, and I must go and see it. I ask you to help me excuse it is just like, oh, I have a business here. I have a field, okay? I have a business, so my business is more important than your invitation. Okay, so maybe some of us are like that. Okay, our business are more important than the invitation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now, if that is your way, change your way. Because your life is in danger. Okay? Why? Why did I say your life is danger? Because you will be used to that. Used to that. And then everything is okay. You will do the same. The same pattern. Everything. you Until you die. Until you grow old. Until you die. You will continue doing that. Your ground. Your b properties are more important than the invitation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Alright? Number two. Excuse. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen. And I'm going to test them. I ask you to help me excuse. So what is this again? It's like another property. Okay, so number one is ground. Number two is oxen. Okay, property oxen. These are, these are your concentration. And then another one. I still another help. I have married a wife. And therefore, I cannot come. It is just like... I am excused because my family is going to, to, to that place. My appointment, I have appointment with my, with my family. My family, I love wife, my wife more than Jesus. Or I love my husband more than Jesus. Or I love my, my, my reputation more than Jesus. Okay, so three things that we can learn here. Number one, properties, business, or your personal life could be an excuse. Okay? And these are the reasons that you will not be able to sit down at the table of the Lord in the kingdom of God. All right? As I have said, this is the reason why I am waiting for the second coming 
I am waiting for all the promises of Jesus Christ. Because I know that the promises of Jesus Christ are all true. They are true. They are not lies. They are not bola. They are not fake news. They are reliable and they are eternal. My brother and sister. And for the past 2,000 years, billions of Christians, probably millions, millions of people are waiting for this for the past 2,000 years. And it so happened that we were born in this generation. Remember that God has chosen generation. What is the meaning of chosen generation? In every generation, there are group of people who believe in Jesus Christ. Not all people believe on that generation. There are few. All right? There are few. And be sure that you belong to our generation. Amen? Amen. So 21. So that servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. What is the meaning of this? Remember that Jesus Christ sent the invitation to the Jewish people and then so many excuses. So many said that, no, I cannot make it. I cannot make it. Okay? In other language, they will tell you, I have no time to read the Bible. I have no time to come to the church. I have no time to the Bible study, but I have time on my gadget. I have time to do all my overtimes in job, but I have no time to Jesus Christ. And then you want to be saved? You want to sit down in the kingdom of God? You want to sit down at the table? Now, so then you will tell, I have no time, I have no time, and then you want to be in heaven? No way! No way, my brother and sister. Don't fool yourself. You cannot do that to God. What God requires is, when He sends the invitation, you will respond 100%. Okay? And according to this parable, because God was rejected, He go to other group. He went to other group. He went to other group and look at this group. Look at this group. Who are this group? The people in the streets. The people. The poor people. Okay? If the rich people will not respond to God, God will, you, will go to the poor. And if the Jewish people will not respond to the invitation, He will go to the Gentiles. And if the Gentile people will stop serving God, He will go back to the Jews. As long as there are people who will serve God, serve the Lord. Okay, if this church, if this church, our community, okay, if nobody will stand in the name of Jesus Christ, he will just allow it to be destroyed. And God will raise up another group of people that will bring glory unto his name. Remember that it is only by grace. The invitation there represents the grace of God. Okay, that's why here, if we are in the business of the Lord, my brother and sisters, I always, be, be very, very, very careful, me personally, I am very, very careful as a pastor. I don't want business. I don't want to engage myself in business. There's so many invitations. Until today, Okay, I receive a lot of invitation. Now, Pastor Perdi, I heard that you are doing good in New York. Now you can earn more money if you will do this. <laughs> All right? You can save more for your church so that we can... You know, so all of these are business. No, 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 no. My business is the business of the Father. Amen? Amen? And that is our business. That's the reason why I want to engage you. Okay? Your pastor is sometimes makulit to you because I want you to be involved in the business of the Lord so that on the day of judgment, you will be able to sit down at the table of the Lord. Give glory to God. And that is our goal. That is our goal, my brother and sisters. The invitation is 
started from our God. It started from our God. And then look at verse 22. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded. And still there is room. Wow. There are more room. So we invited the Jewish people. We invited the poor. We invited the Gentiles. And there are more rooms available. Why? Why? Why do you think that God did it this way? Because the kingdom of God is unlimited. <laughs> it is unlimited. You cannot say, Lord, we've done our part. Oh, Lord, I will retire. Okay, that's why there is no retirement. Amen, Sister Georgie. Walang retirement. <laughs> we will not retire in the Lord. Sabi ko nga nun, Lord, seven years. I will stay here until, ano, 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 until what year? Ten years? No, sabi ko, five years only. Or six years. But I remember, I, I realized that there is no retirement in the Lord. There is no retirement. We will not retire. I might be here. Okay, but uh, I will continue serving God because there is, is still more rooms. In other words, there are more things to do. I pray that we can raise up more preacher, more pastors in the future, especially to our young generation, because there is, is still many rooms. Okay. Limit. The kingdom of God has no limit. Okay? 23. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways. Maybe they are just stuck by the biking uh, marathon. Okay? So anyway, Pastor Michael, we have invitation. And hedges. Stone hedges. Have you been there, brother? <laughs> and compel them. Look at it. And compel them to come in that my house may be filled. What is this? They compel them. Require them. Push them. Okay? Push them to come. Because this is our God. Our God is aggressive. He wants all people to be saved. That's what God wants. Compel them to come. Compel them and bring them into the kingdom of God. So in other words, the Christian should not be passive. The Christian should be active. One sister said, Pastor, after three years, then I will retire. I will go to God. I will. No, don't, don't wait for the retirement, sister. Do it now. All right? Because... There is no limits for God. All right? You know, sometimes we did it like this, like parable, okay? Like a, like a, a story, okay? That we need to understand the spiritual meaning of this teaching to God. And then look at verse 24. I want you to read what is written in verse 24. Can you read? Ready? Go. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. None of those who were invited but rejected, okay, shall taste my supper. What is the meaning of this? Remember that the Israelites thought that they will be there in the presence of God, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But because of this, because of this misunderstanding. All right? Now the question is, how do we apply this, my brother and sisters, to our lives? Okay? The invitation is the next passage. All right? Okay? So remember that Jesus Christ, okay, you will check, huh? If you will understand, if you will analyze the teaching of Jesus, okay? This is the teaching and then the, the next passages is the explanation. Okay, that is the application. That's why we have the teaching and then the, the application or the interpretation of the passage comes followed. Okay, look at verse 25 of the same chapter. 
Now great multitudes went with him. <clears throat> and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. In other words, when God invites you and you refuse to listen, and then you call yourself, I'm a Christian, Jesus said, you cannot be my disciple. The meaning of hating your father and mother, does it mean that Sister Sosa, uh, sino bang mag dito? Where is mother and daughter here? Okay. Sister Sandra and Sister Joy. Does it mean that Sister Joy has to hate Sister Sandra? Is that the literal meaning of that? The meaning of this is not that. The meaning of this is if you cannot hate the tradition of your father and mother. Because during the time, during the time, the Jewish people are very, very traditionalist. Why? They have Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the teaching of Moses, the teaching of David, the teaching of prophet Isaiah, Jeremiah, and then Jesus Christ said, hate all of those, abandon those. Ignore the tradition of the Jewish people, but follow me, listen to me, because my teaching is the right salvation. Now, do you think the Jewish people will immediately accept Jesus Christ by just uh, by, by, by this kind of teaching? Do you think they will just believe in the Lord Jesus Christ by saying, abandon all your tradition? No way for the Jewish people, no way. But for Jesus Christ, he said, if you will not abandon those, you cannot be my disciple. It is similar to us. If you cannot abandon your tradition from the Philippines, from Puerto Rico, or anywhere, you cannot be my disciple. And be sure that that tradition contradicts the teaching of Jesus Christ. So if your tradition contradicts the teaching of Jesus, you cannot be my disciple. You cannot put them together. All right? And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me, he cannot be my disciple. So there are two things that we can learn from this. Number one, excuse me, abandon your tradition. And then number two, take up your suffering. What is that suffering, my brother and sisters? You're suffering to serve God. Okay, you're suffering to serve the Lord. It is not easy to serve the Lord, my brother and sisters. It is not easy to become a believer. Number one, why? You will abandon your old tradition. Can you do that right away? No. And then number two, are you willing to suffer for Jesus Christ? So two things. You will abandon that, and then you are willing to suffer two things that God requires for Jesus Christ. After receiving the invitation, because Jesus Christ sent the invitation to you, and then you accepted the invitation, you keep it with you, and then when you open the invitation, you are invited to sit down with Jesus at the kingdom of heaven. But these are the requirements. Number one, abandon your tradition. Will you abandon your tradition? Number two, are you willing to suffer for my sake? Are you willing to give up everything for my sake? So those two, these two are the requirements of Jesus Christ. Are you following? And then you can now be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And then look at verse 28. This is a challenge of Jesus Christ for those who refuse. Look at that. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it began to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. What is the meaning of Jesus Christ here? According to Jesus Christ, if Christianity is a Christianity is a very very high it is just like a very very high tower it's a very high tower okay 
It means that if you want to be a Christian, there is so much huge demand from God. And if you are not willing to do that, stop obey, stop going to the church. Stop it. You are just wasting your time. That's why he said, look at that. What is the meaning of it? Does not sit down first and count the cost whether he has enough to finish it. Okay? It means that to build a tower, it requires enough money. It requires a lot of efforts. And to be a Christian, it requires a lot of abandonment of tradition and embracing suffering in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you understand that? That is the meaning of that. You cannot be a mediocre Christian. You cannot be half-half Christian according to the teaching of Jesus Christ. And that is the application of invitation. Okay? Jesus Christ gave you an invitation in that, oh, cool, cool, I'm a Christian. And then these are the requirements. And the requirements of Jesus Christ is, number one, abandonment of the tradition. Number two, embracing the, the suffering. And then in this, in this uh, 28, Jesus Christ is giving us understanding that if you are not willing to do this, do not, just don't, don't become a Christian. Don't become a Christian. Are you following? I hope you will not understand the teaching. You will not misunderstood the teaching. Because according to Jesus Christ, if you are not willing to suffer, don't become a Christian. If you are not willing to abandon, don't become a Christian. You need to count the cost that becoming a Christian is just like this. Because look at Jesus Christ, Okay, look at verse 16. Less, after he has laid the foundation, it is just like after doing the beginning, in the beginning, and then you stop along the way. And when you stop along the way, you will be mocked by whom? By the people? No, you will be mocked by Satan. Because Satan will tell you, oh, we're all the same. We're all the same. Oh, you're only good in beginning. You're only good in one year. One year you're good. And then after one year or two years, three years, five years, ten years, you stop serving God. Why? It means you are just like this. You didn't count the cost of becoming a believer. That's why I always tell you that, I, you know, I always tell that I have been serving God since 1989. It is my 32nd year. It is my 33 years. Because I want to tell you that I don't stop serving my God. And I don't want you to follow other people that after receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior, they are willing to serve for one year, two years, three years, five years. After five years, you cannot find them anymore. And I saw a lot of members of our church before. I saw them in 2008, 19, but they are no longer in the church. But they are rich, my brother and sister. They are rich. They are rich in sinfulness. They are rich in evil things. And yet they want to sit down in the table of the Lord. You cannot do that to God. That's why Jesus Christ, you need to count the cost. You need to count the cost. And my brother and sisters, you will not regret it if you, if you desire to be faithful with God. For the past 32 years, I have never had this regret. Okay? For abandoning all my plans. No. I remain faithful to God because my God is faithful to him. There is one man, his name is Origen, okay? This Origen served the Lord for 80 years, okay? He served God for 80 years. And then he was taken by the Roman soldiers during the Roman Empire in Ephesus, okay? No, no, he was 84 years, 80 years. But he said, I served the Lord for 64 years. And now the Romans told them, told him, abandon your faith and then we will not kill you anymore. That's what the Romans said. You just abandon your faith because he was taken captive because he was preaching the gospel in Ephesus. 
Okay? And then the Roman told him, stop preaching the gospel, uh, and then we will not kill you. And then he said, I served the Lord for 64 years, and then now, in just a moment, do you want me to abandon my Lord? After 64 years? Now, will you do that? How many years you have been serving the Lord? Five years? Ten years? Come on, count the number of years that you have been serving the Lord. How many years now? And those are your investment to God. That is your investment. Then continue serving God. Maybe some of you start to serve the Lord in Hong Kong, in Singapore, in Middle East, or in other parts of the world, or maybe in the Philippines. Those are the days that you have been serving God. You started serving God for many, many, and all of those are counted. God will not forget the good works that we have done. Okay? Okay, maybe you have some uh, failures. Okay, maybe you have some failures. I have failures. You have failures. But God will not look at the failures. God will look at your faithfulness. Okay, when you will die in the Lord, all of our services are counted for God. Because God will not abandon. And not, God will not ignore. And God will not forget the good works that we have done for Him. Amen? Are you glad that you are Christians? Amen. Yes, I'm glad that I am a Christian. And then look at verse 31. This is our last passage. Or what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? Okay. Or else, while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks condition of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. According to Jesus Christ, if you are a king and you have only 10,000 soldiers, while your enemies has 20,000 soldiers... Okay, you have 10, they have 20. According to Jesus, will you not check whether you can compete with them or not? Will you not send delegation to make peace? Are you following? So remember, Jesus Christ said that, oh, will you not do, let's have a peace instead of fighting because we cannot fight against you. Okay, so Jesus Christ here is that since you cannot fight back against God, you cannot win with God. On the day of judgment, you cannot win. When God pronounced the judgment, you cannot say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me because the judgment has been done. When God passed the judgment, you cannot do it. That's why Jesus Christ said, you better make reconciliation now while you still have time. All right, why you still have time? According to prophet Isaiah. Oops. Oops. Sorry, sorry. 65, Isaiah 65. According to prophet Isaiah 65. I was sought. Oh, let's go back to look at that. Look at this. I want you to check this. Huh? I want you to check and understand this. I was sought by those who did not ask for me. They are the Gentile people. The Gentile people are not seeking God. They are seeking material things. And then God said, I was sought by those who did not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that was not called by my name. I have stretched out my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good according to their own thoughts. Look at verse 11. But you, Israel, are those who forsake the Lord, who forget my holy mountain. Therefore, I will number you for the sword, and you shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, you did not answer. When I spoke, you did not hear, but did evil before my eyes, and chose that in which I do not delight. 
And according to God, I was talking to Israel, but they keep on ignoring me. And then I was not talking to the Gentiles. It is the Gentiles who found me. <laughs> you see, you can see here. But God is offering his invitation to all people in our generation, Jews or Gentiles. Okay? And anyone who will believe in the name of Jesus Christ, anyone who will receive the invitation and obey. Remember, what are the conditions of the invitation? You are invited to sit down at the table, but you need to abandon your uh, tradition. And then number two, you must suffer for my name. So two things. And if you are willing to do that, my brother and sister, for sure, God will honor you. You want to be honored by God. Amen? Okay, when we go, when we go in heaven, okay, when you are in the moment that we will be with God, it's either you will be rewarded or you will be punished by God. There is no in-between. It's either you will receive reward or you will receive uh, punishment from God. Pastor, I always heard that. I heard this already, okay? But I still want to remind myself, okay? I need to remind myself that these are the things that will happen when I die or on the day of judgment. Whether you like it or not, you cannot avoid this. Okay, there is one thing that will happen in your life that you do not know when, and that is your death. Okay, you will die, mamamatay ka rin. But the thing is, be sure that before you breathe your last, you know that your destination is sitting at the table of the Lord in the kingdom of God. Amen? Let's all stand.